Go. Greetings all, Shane Bruce, Resto Mod Daisy. Hey, it's a variation of what's in the box. If we got a gun in from a customer, he needs it fixed. I think it's going to be fairly simple based on what he told me the problems with the gun was when he shipped it to me, but we're going to find out. So this is going to be hopefully a, an inclusive all-in-one. Hey, here's the gun. Here's the problem. Here's how you fix it. Let's fix it. Let's put it back together. Hey, does it shoot? Mm, hopefully in one go. So first question is, what's in the box? Well, this is supposed to be a Daisy Model 155. I'm not sure which 155, but 155. So it's an older gun. It should be a Plymouth, Michigan gun. Of course, we're forecasting. We don't know. We haven't opened the box to see yet. But when we take a peek inside, as you can see, it's partially disassembled. So that's a big step forward. There we have a it looks like a 155 buttstock. It's not bad nick at all. Look at that. Man, I wonder what caused that up there. That's just some kind of varnish overload. I mean, it looks like the gun's been worked on before. It's definitely a different color here than here. So I think it's had a little work done in the past. But overall, the buttstock looks clean. No major issues there. Let's see. Get the receiver out. Ah, here we go. It is Daisy, definitely a Daisy number 155. Now, the 155 is a small frame Daisy. It was used for a couple of different model variations, notably among the uh, Buzz Barton Special. All right, so let's take a look and see what we got here. It's a strip receiver, bottle cap still in it. Any other surprises in the box? Aha, uh -huh. a little green bag of goodies. So we'll do that, and the cardboard can now leave the scene. We have a receiver. We have a buttstock. I kind of like this. First time I ever got a plastic box full of parts. Should be easy to diagnose what the issue is with this gun. Well, I can see a major issue right away. All right, we have a trigger. We have the top stock screw. Look how long that thing is. Extend it all the way down into the uh, lever channel. Trigger return spring. We have this the uh, spring stop. That's either the stock bolt or the trigger bolt. That's a stock bolt or a trigger bolt. And there's our lever bolt. So those components are here. Let's put our attractive plastic box over there and look in the green bag. The green bag will have all the surprises. And I think I know what the problem is. Yes. Look at that. I didn't even have to take the gun apart to diagnose it. Hey. Freaking amazing. Well, it was already predominantly taken apart. So. Well, it was completely taken Dying apart, actually, except for the uh, bottle cap being left in. But we'll get that out now to see if we have any problems with it. Gun's been painted. All right. So it's got a coat of flat black paint on it. That's good. That means no surface work. All right. Shot tube has the BB retention spring. That's an important little bit. Uh, looks like it's been painted as well. We'll take a look at the uh, seam here. Not evident at all. I don't see a single line. Let me back that out for you so you can get a focus on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. in a, in a, here, let me grab another shot too, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, what I'm looking for. Oh, let's see. Oh, not a good candidate. Not a good candidate. I was like, man, of all the... Yeah, I got shot two thought the was it. Can't find one that's good enough. Not a good candidate. Well, I, yeah. they know what they look like. If they yeah. don't, they can go look at another Anyway, video. sometimes there is a seam that you'll be able to see visually. It runs from where this hole is at all the way down to the muzzle because these original shot tubes were, were rolled seamed construction. All right, no, sometimes can leak air. I think mm. with the coat of paint that's on this one, any air leakage issues have been resolved. So the shot tube looks good. Now, for the uh, informed viewers of our channel who have seen this many times before because we've got 355 videos out on stuff just like this. Who can guess what's wrong with this gun? Can you guess? I guess something's wrong with the spring. Oh, there's that. There's no leather piece, whatever you call it. Well, there is some, some leftover leather piece here, but the main thing is there is no air tube. Ah, uh, that's what it's called. That's the problem. <laughs> Let's take a look here and see if we can... You know, like one of these days we'll know what all these parts are called. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. All right, now here is another similar air tube. It's called the Top Hat. That's how this was... When we take this apart in just a second, you'll see the similarities. Except the fact that 
The one in this gun no longer has the air tube, so it's incapable of transferring air from the compression chamber to the base of the BB in the uh, shot tube and pushing it on down the barrel. That is the major flaw in the gun. Now, there's two things we can do to fix this. We can substitute a current production air tube that's been overboard with a smaller compression cup and replacement abutment seal because this is a leather seal. Whoops. This is a leather seal gun. And right here, let's take a look at the receiver. Right there where that bump's at is going to be another leather seal. Let's take a look and see if it's... Say, is nope. It in there? No, bits of it are. Here, oh, take a look down that board. Wow. See that great big hole? Yes. And see that fraggedy raggedy oh, stuff? Oh, yeah. That's the remnants of the original leather abutment oh. seal. So that'll have to be removed manually. Let's see if we can... No, nah, I know we can't do that. We, can, we will not be able to see down in there with the camera eye. No. But with our naked eye, we can see that there's remnants of the leather compression seal that would uh, normally sit in that position. So that's going to have to be removed. Uh, and I'll contact the uh, owner and see if he wants to try to substitute in a a different top hat leather seal set which is going to be difficult for me because i just don't mess with these so my alternative for him will be to either go with the standard bore uh, modern air tube design like this or an overboard design uh, on the spring on this gun we can see that it is if you take a look at the color there it's copper washed to a certain degree so you can see a, a bit of color. So this is probably the original mainspring that came in the gun. And it's a 19, it's a 155 Plymouth gun. So that's probably a mid-30s manufacturer. Another thing we look at is the plunger assembly itself. Back plate's in good shape. Uh, I don't see a lot of uh, scoring or scarring on the plunger legs right in through here by being stropped repeatedly by the uh, force of compressing the spring, arming the gun, and firing it. So our next step is we're going to pause the camera for a minute and set up the uh, mainspring extraction tool. I'm paused. All right, now we're at the bench. We've got the <laughs> fabulous mainspring installer. Are we upside down? No, we're... Left, right? We're going to be sideways on this? Am I standing on my head on screen right now? We're going to find out later on, aren't we? I guess we are. Oh, I didn't account for right. that. That's, okay. Well, not only did we turn the camera off to go over to the vice, but we went to Australia. That'll, oh. that'll be what we tell people. You know. All right, so we take our mainspring assembly, okay. and we place it in our uh, mainspring compression tool. And we take our washer, mm -hmm. which has a slot cut in it. We drop it in through here to give the mainspring something to bind on. All right, so we position that in the front of the mainspring compressor tool. Some of you may realize this is a caulk gun. Yeah, hey, don't let them in. That's on exactly secrets. what it is. So you use the caulk gun slash mainspring compression tool to compress the mainspring. And then, if you're lucky, you can get the little pin out without a fight, but we're not lucky, so we have to go over here and get another tool, commonly called a pair of pliers, and we got to pull that puppy out because it's got to go. It can't stay here. Yeah, there we go. And out comes the top hat. Uh -huh. and as you can see, it's busted off. No longer resembles the top hat of days of yore. Hashtag wreck. Okay, so now let's... Uh, pull the uh, mainspring assembly compressor apart and take a look at the bits and pieces over on the main bench. Uh, we'll, we'll need to clean all of this up before we reassemble and begin conducting ballistics tests. All right, the first test is how screwed up is the mainspring? Well, it ain't. That's not sacked at all. Look at it go. This is good news. The plunger assembly is looking pretty clean. It's gonna need to be wire wheeled down, cleaned up a touch. And then what we're going to do, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> is get an appropriate air tube. We'll probably go with two tests, a standard Red Rider air tube, a new set of Model 25 um, synthetic compression cup, and a synthetic abutment seal once we get the leather seal dug out of this gun. And we will see how fast it runs. Uh, then we'll swap those components out with a Cobalt 327 mainspring, an overbore air tube, and repeat the process. Now, this is a standard factory length, or the standard length shot tube. So we will also do a ballistics test by subbing in a Model 25 uh, current production 50 round uh, force feed magazine tube as opposed to the, what did they say, 500 rounds here on this? Thousand. Thousand shots. One thousand shots. One thousand shots. 1,000 BBs. 
uh, and see what kind of velocity changes we, we will find. Normally the power triad is one of these installed, a Cobalt 327 mainspring installed, and an overbore air tube and new seals installed. And that normally will get a small frame configured like this into the 350 plus range, 325 to 375. We'll see how it behaves once we actually uh, get that component done. Uh, there's one other thing I wanted to point out to the viewership. Now, on this daisy and all other daisies, there's a little metal insert. And it has uh, a set of little feet here. Okay. And in later guns, the uh, plunger assembly had two little feet on either side of this. And those rode that track to keep the rear of the plunger from bobbing up and down during the compression cycle. And this gun is early enough to where that improvement had not been made, but it still has this internal track. And uh, normally it is tack welded, as you'll see here by that little indentation. And that was where the factory tack weld was. So I'm right? like, where am I supposed to be looking? Right there. Oh, okay. That's where we're looking at. Tack welded on both sides, but this one, with age and time, has broken loose. Not the end of the world, because that's also the hole that the lever bolt will fit through to hold the lever in place. So we won't need to re-tack it. We may need to fight with it to get it in there. Oh, there we go. It'll go in and hold that uh, trough in the appropriate spot. So, the only thing wrong with the gun at this point in time is a lack of an air tube. Yes, a lack of the air tube. This should look like that. And as you can see, this does not. does not. So one of these is not like the other. All right, we've uh, hit our time limit, so we're gonna go ahead and call this video number one on the 155. You've seen the uh, component parts. We took apart the plunger assembly. We've made our diagnosis. Now we need to do is clean it up internally because it's pretty clean on the outside and uh, re-equip it with enough equipment to get some baseline ballistics testing done and then find out from our customer what he wants done. That's all we've got for you today, kids. This is Shane Bruce with Resto Mod Daisy, signing off.